Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, today uh, we have teaching, and we cannot uh, do question and answer today. We'll skip that uh, portion of uh, uh, Sunday teaching, and we will go right into uh, Gana Chakra uh, talk offering uh, to commemorate uh, the 13th anniversary of uh, our precious guru, late Kishi uh, Sudim Gelsen. And uh, you can see uh, roasted barley flour uh, in, uh, cakes here. We call it chalk in Tibetan. That's actually traditional. These days it's becoming rare and rare. And uh, Tenzin Palmo, uh, Kishala's niece and family, uh, so they especially requested the monks to make those. So they're sponsoring this chalk primarily. And uh, so we're here together. Uh, to do the talk. <clears throat> so I'll also do the short prayers in the morning so we have more time for teaching. Anyway, we'll do more prayer at the talk, so I don't want to be redundant. Uh, of course, I don't mind to be redundant, but... Uh, uh, so we will do uh, refuge and bodhicitta prayer. We will do one stanza, wisdom gone beyond, recite the mantra, and then I'll do the mandala offering, and then we go into teaching. Namo Guru Me Namo Me Daya Namo Dharamaya Namo Sangaya Namo Oh, 
Uh, let me remind um, all of ourselves to take a moment and cultivate uh, bodhicitta motivation or the highest uh, form of motivation uh, seeking complete enlightenment for the benefit of all other sentient beings. And with that kind of uh, at least uh, contrived uh, bodhicitta motivation, <clears throat> we should participate uh, in this discourse uh, on Bodhisattva's way of life. <laughs> So we have uh, been discussing uh, what we call the guarding uh, alertness or uh, introspection or session in Tibetan. And um, uh, so where uh, we left off uh, last week, uh, we have been to, uh, uh, in discussing how uh, you know, mind uh, uh, is uh, uh, the core, uh, how should I say, uh, thing that we should attend to, uh, and uh, the point of whole developing uh, introspection and any other practice we do uh, is basically uh, to uh, change uh, or to transform uh, our mind. Yes. Sumbatani <laughs> Hidden 
Uh, we are on page uh, <coughs> 42 of um, <coughs> uh, this English translation um, uh, rendered by Stephen Batchelor. Um, <coughs> and uh, what Kishala has explained uh, relates to stanza number 17. <coughs> um, uh, so as Kishala explained uh, uh, that... Um, so guarding our mind or protecting our mind, same song about Tibetan, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, is a crucial uh, matter. And why, if you ask, uh, because, uh, you know, we wish for happiness and we don't wish for suffering. And uh, at the root of all of these things is the mind, right? If you want to be happy, uh, then we have to, uh, you know, discipline our mind uh, so that it does not follow uh, what we call uh, you know, wrong uh, actions and wrong direction. And if we want happiness, we have to set our mind in the right direction or kind of focus on uh, virtue. And uh, so it's through mindfulness and introspection, tenshi in Tibetan, uh, that we stay focused uh, in our practice or virtue. So guarding our mind... Uh, uh, in a sense, is uh, you know everything, uh, because uh, if you want happiness, uh, so happiness can be achieved uh, through protecting our mind, guarding our mind, directing our mind into positive actions and practice. You know, and if you don't wish suffering, uh, then we have to guard our mind. Uh, you know, following the wrong direction and course of actions, uh, and that's how we can uh, prevent uh, 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 prevent the suffering. And so disciplining our mind uh, uh, matters, and for that, uh, you know, we need to be mindful, uh, we need to be introspective, uh, so that our mind, uh, you know, stays focused uh, on virtue. No, Show 
Uh, stanza 18 reads, uh, This being so, I shall hold and guard my mind well. Without the discipline of guarding the mind, what use are many other disciplines? Unquote. So as Kishal explained, uh, uh, that Buddha himself uh, you know, stressed the importance of uh, disciplining our mind or guarding our mind uh, introspectively. Uh, and he said, if you don't have uh, that mental discipline or disciplining the mind, uh, all other forms of discipline, uh, you know, becomes uh, futile, so to speak. Okay? And as Kishla explained, uh, uh, that the discipline, the Tibetan word Tushu, it relates to how we conduct ourselves uh, physically, verbally, and mentally, right? The behaviors of body, speech, and mind, or the actions of body, speech, and mind, you know, uh, are what we're talking about. And uh, so if our mind is not disciplined, you know, maybe we discipline our body or we discipline our speech, you know, but these disciplines will, you know, be futile mode of thing. Uh, the example Gishal has given is that if our mind is not disciplined, but physically we are into doing prostrations, you know, and our mind is not disciplined, but verbally we are into chanting, you know, whatever. Yeah, but those physical actions, behaviors and verbal behaviors uh, really have not much meaning if the mind is uh, not uh, uh, you know, disciplined. So of all types of discipline, uh, the uh, supreme discipline uh, is uh, uh, that of the mind. So guarding mind is uh, supreme discipline. If we guard our mind, all other actions follow, verbal and physical follow. If our mind is unguarded, we may physically you know, be in a discipline or verbally chanting and reciting prayers and all of that and physically doing prostrations and uh, maybe I add circumambulating, all of that, Gisela didn't say that, uh, but those would be, uh, you know, uh, not so much meaningful, okay? What is that? You know, there are some people, 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 La Tipone, Nio Jibime, she will do you here now. She naming Dan Jerry, Gazo, J. Number Pizzi, show you some so. Gazo soon on the pay, German Jerry. Number she will delay so, you are over. Soon be said, Jesse, 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 she don't end day. Don't walk over less, show you. Good 
uh, so as Krishna explained, uh, that of all types of disciplines that we engage in, uh, uh, that of the mind is uh, supreme. If mind is uh, you know, disciplined well, uh, then all other disciplines follow, right? Our physical uh, discipline and verbal discipline will follow accordingly. If the mind is uh, not disciplined, we may engage in other forms of discipline, uh, physical discipline such as doing a lot of prostrations, verbal discipline, doing a lot of chanting and recitations, whatever. Uh, but if the mind is not there, these actions are all just end up, uh, you know, being fruitless. Uh, so it's just like you just it's simply exhausted yourself doing you know, prostrations and uh, reciting prayers. And, uh, but the mind is not there, it's distracted. So it has no meaning, really. So you just simply exhausted yourself. I mean, that's uh, uh, what the saying. Uh, and uh, also in a sutra somewhere, Buddha is addressing bodhisattvas, the need to focus on the mind and uh, train your mind well, right? If the mind's not trained well, even if you keep yourself sort of like busy uh, physically and verbally, as if you're engaging in the practices and disciplines, like uh, he said, these are like uh, you, you are, uh, how should I say, I mean, we metaphorically called uh, these are Mara's actions, activities. Okay, so I asked for what does Mara's action mean, Gishala, like blessed by the Mara now? He said, well, it means like these actions really do not constitute causes for us to come closer to enlightenment. You know, this becomes just distractions. You know, the mind is not there. What brings us closer to enlightenment, to the happiness we are seeking, is only if the mind is uh, tuned and in the right direction. If the mind is distracted, all these other forms of discipline are like Mara's activities, you know, uh, and uh, often it just end up exhausting ourselves, keeping ourselves too busy, exhausted, with no, uh, m you know, no fruit uh, to be enjoyed. Numbering so as we are uh, you know dealing with how mind is of primary importance and when we talk about uh, you know how to say practice of engaging in a discipline uh, 
So discipline of the mind uh, is of utmost importance. If uh, it is not there, then other forms of discipline, physical or verbal, might just simply end up being futile uh, and exhaustion. Uh, and um, uh, so if that's the case, then you know, somebody raises a kind of a, a, a concern here. In, in a particular commentary, they said, then what about like, you know, Buddha talks about, uh, you know, for example, in the case of, uh, I think, monastic uh, uh, members, how they need to live a very simple living, high thinking kind of a life, right? You know, you should wear very simple clothing, the simple food, the simple, right, bedding, everything. So why is all those things? Because all of those things are to do with the physical, right, activity, not really mind. Uh, so the explanation given is, the, but that's based on the understanding that your mind, right, is disciplined, and now if you engage in all those things, then it's meaningful. But if your mind is not there, then those are secondary things. You know, wearing a simple clothing, eating a simple food, and you know, and living under a tree or something, you know, but those are secondary. Uh, if the mind is not there, these really don't mean uh, much. Yes. <laughs> Kyu Sumati <laughs> so the next uh, um, in the commentary, they talk about uh, uh, you know the examples, right? How to guard our mind, you know, and what examples are there. So the examples are provided in stanza uh, nineteen. Uh, let me read it first and then trust the explanation given. Uh, just as I would be attentive and careful of a wound when amidst a bustling, uncontrolled crowd, so I should always guard the wound of my mind when dwelling among harmful people. Yeah. Let's say we have a physical wound, yeah, and we know we need to really protect it, we have to be very careful, vigilant in a crowd, especially unruly crowds, you know, who don't care about you know, any crazy things they're doing, right? So as we know, if we have physical wound, we cannot participate in a, you know, kind of a touch body kind of a sports, because then it's going to rub against your wound and you're going to cry, you know, painful. He said, he didn't say the cry part, I just added. it. Uh, so if we don't want that pain, so we want to, right, uh, kind of stay away uh, from uh, such crazy sports or unruly people, right, who don't care about how they behave, you know. So in the same way, 
we need to protect the wound of our mind when we administer, uh, you know, uh, you know what we call harmful people. So we have to protect our mind all the time, right? We have to, uh, and maybe more explanation will follow. So I'm waiting for what does harmful people mean? <laughs> no. Simpson, same match or wage. Did me me cars or game never change me, yam do yuna, and same same game the Yabosum was deep bebetting the carrier. Same master do that, but the same you must do that pen of sugar, same matica yamara, and the master with the dress you go to. But then I just same you matter with same sweet matter that you are is. No, the Tabari song, you might use some pen of Marva, the Michaban with the Sugar. The same you must somewhere the me contain yam the dinner cigarette. Same must somewhere the me contain yam the dinner cigarette. The same must say I did this is your me that the good of us or the no, 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 no. Uh, so sorry for, I'm trying to get explanation of the harmful part, right? And then of course Kishla explained other things. He thought I didn't hear it first, but uh, uh, so anyway, so just like we said, uh, if we have a physical wound and we are in a crowd and this crowd is kind of unruly, right? They really don't care about, uh, you know, how they behave. And especially if you are in a sporting event or something, then during whatever that time, you have to be mindful all the time, right? Because if you are, you know, if you, um, how should you say, uh, remain unmindful for a little bit of time, within that time, somebody can rub against your wound and then you will have the pain, okay? In the same way, so when we are among harmful people, meaning, uh, you know, those, you know, who could be our negative friends, you know, who are going to bless us to do the wrong things, you know, that kind of blessing we get, uh, then we have to, be mindful of uh, to protect the wound of our mind. And it's not for a day, not for a week, not for a month, but you know, all the time. Okay? Uh, because if we lose that uh, uh, kind of vigilance, uh, then during that period of time, uh, so the negative friends can you know, do that, right? And uh, so uh, we don't want to, to, to be in pain. Okay? Okay. No, so, of course, if we compare and contrast the two examples given here, in the case of physical wound, let's say even if we lose a bit of vigilance and somebody rub against our wound, I know it's going to be painful, uh, but uh, I mean, that's about it, right? It cannot, uh, uh, you know, harm us in many lifetimes or anything like that. But if we fail to protect our mind, uh, uh, then if our mind, you know, gets influenced negatively, Right? And then that kind of negativities and delusional things that we experience is going to harm us over many lifetimes. So in that sense, it's much more serious case, isn't it? Uh, if protecting physical wound is so important, just because we don't want to have any more pain or crying session, it becomes much more important to protect the mind because if the mind becomes a negative and delusional, <laughs> then it's going to damage not just this lifetime, but many other lifetimes, you know? So in that sense, uh, mind is of primary uh, concern. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Sonra so basically, as Kishla explained, uh, so the, the commentary uh, tells us uh, that if we have a physical uh, wound and we are going to go to a sporting event, then we have to stay very vigilant, right? Nobody's going to push us around and going to rub against our wound. But even if that happens, it's going to be painful here and now, uh, but there's nothing uh, that's going to affect uh, many lifetimes. Uh, but if we don't protect our mind or guard our mind, the wound of the mind, so to speak, metaphorically, uh, the, the, the guest explains that, you know, if we let others influence our mind negatively, right, engage in negative thinking, delusional thinking, whatever, then that can have uh, ramifications over many lifetimes, right? And those negativities can precipitate our rebirth in, uh, in, the, the, uh, in the bad migrations where we end up for many eons, you know. So from that point of view, uh, guarding our mind uh, really requires uh, uh, primary attention because it's much more impactful, isn't it? Uh, and uh, so that's what uh, what's being said in the commentary. No, Madam Bajiva Raidu Sumi Shiva Zabrujin She Pudonso Sumosa. That day, Kanditan Maja Chuasa, Jitas Maja was the Chuasa, the Yagasnik Kay Chagrizarwa. No. The day Purgis needed those need the Karazan, Purgis need the Karazan. This Yamba Masha, but Chixi Majan said. In number you must see the majestic modern choas, it choas at the same pen double major pa. Conley have a single church and on the church at Damja and Trivers. No, did it send the color caution and Damja and what did she get? So, what Gisela just said is actually a clear. Uh, kind of a commentary on the word, uh, you know, what is in the Indian term and how that was rendered in Tibetan. Uh, this has to do with maybe in the Indian Sanskrit term, there's one word that could have a double meaning or, you know, things like that. So in Tibetan, uh, so that sounds like say, if we uh, don't, uh, you know, uh, the one meaning is that, uh, you know, if we let our mind uh, kind of free, do whatever crazy things it want to do, right? Uh, so then mind will. Uh, uh, get involved in uh, uh, doing the wrong things. Uh, but the other sense is that if we don't uh, put our mind in uh, uh, sort of uh, um, uh, uh, in equanimity, uh, then again, you know, mind can get a negative influence. So it has the double meaning, right? Putting the mind in equanimity or letting the mind free in the sense that it can do uh, you know, whatever it wants to do, you know. What did you Sons, <laughs> 
Uh, so, also, so here we're talking about uh, the need to, uh, to discipline our mind, guard our mind. So we can't let the mind be free in the sense that it can do whatever it wants to do, crazy things, you know. Uh, but another meaning of that is that, you know, mind can be unruly if it has not come under uh, the advice of uh, uh, we call a, a, a sublime being. So that could be like, you know, if... Uh, one has not been fortunate to come under the guidance of gurus, right, qualified, uh, then our mind can, you know, has never learned, you know, how to <laughs> be proper, right? So it can become very unruly. And so one of the things we talked about is that uh, with the physical wound, um, we, uh, if it gets rubbed against, we might suffer here and now, but there are no other ramifications over many lifetimes. But if our mind is uh, wounded, we don't protect it, uh, then we could suffer uh, over many lifetimes. And uh, so, but the example of a particular hell is mentioned, Dijom. Uh, Dijom is like, uh, I mean, literally means mass destruction, but the description of the hell is that, uh, that you know, uh, you get crushed in between two running mountains, you know? You know? And uh, so he said, so why you just mention that particular hell, right? Of course, in general, if we let our mind become negatively influenced, we could be born in any kind of hell, doesn't matter. But the reason why they mention that particular hell is like it somehow correlates to the physical wound, isn't it? The physical wound, how we get uh, hurt is like when it's rubbed against by some other person, right? So in the same way, if our, the wound of the mind is not uh, guarded, uh, then our mind end up doing negativity and we end up in a hell where we are crushed in between uh, two running mountains, right? So kind of because there's a resemblance being crushed, right? It's mentioned, it doesn't mean that you will necessarily only be born in that hell and nowhere else, right? I mean, if we do negativity, we could be born in, you know, any different hells, so. And how this, you know, commentary goes into every detail, so that's part of the detail, yeah. Some of the things this <laughs> So, um, and if these are like minutiae details, again, that get into, and maybe I don't know how much sense it makes in the American context, uh, even Gisela saying that too, not just me. Uh, but anyway, my job is to translate whether it makes sense or not. Uh, it's there, he said it. Um, so, I mean, some, uh, I think, commentators, they believe uh, uh, that, you know, how one might end up uh, being in that particular hell where you get crushed between two running mountains is because uh, if you lack a mindfulness introspection, that's where, you know, you will end up, right? That's how they explain it, you know? Uh, and, uh, and, and then how do you really crush between the mountains, right? Okay, give me an example I can understand. But the example is something maybe Tibetans and similar culture might understand, not here. I don't think Americans ever 
do these things, like uh, what do you call that, laos or lice? And hairs. And we have seen like people crush between the nails like this. And it, it, it can even make a terrible sound, right? Bloody thing come out. It's so painful. It's just like that. Like that. Just like you crush the you know, lice in between your nails in the same way you get crushed down in by mountains, right? That's, a, that's the meaning of, right? Uh, as we said. So, but maybe that has no like equivalent example in American context anyway. So, so, but you can easily imagine being crushed between two, you know, uh, running mountains, you know, yeah. Oh, this is Dem <laughs> Turn <laughs> In you know, discipline our mind well, yeah? Uh, and when our mind is disciplined uh, well, then we could uh, be, you know, uh, in unfavorable external conditions, but uh, those conditions cannot overpower us and, uh, you know, uh, overwhelm us. And the examples given is that when our mind is very disciplined, that even if we are among the crowds of people who are just angry mob, right? But that angry mob, external condition, is not going to make us lose our peace of mind because our mind is well-trained, isn't it? When our mind is very disciplined, we could be among the crowd of this lustful people, right, who have nothing but lust, you know, chasing the lust, uh, but we will not be overwhelmed by their, you know, lust and all of that. So this is the benefit of uh, disciplining uh, uh, our mind, so that the external conditions cannot uh, overtake us and overpower us. You know. Yes. So that, sorry. So that way we can protect our vows and uh, precepts intact. So we are able to uh, maintain the purity of uh, mind and the thought, right, and actions. In Samsung Grace, Luma, the same case, share is the case of Kazaki, that is here, the other take a tone to you at the Karasana. Dog in me, son, swing him sugar so, Segur never the chance of the dent of a soggy, the good that the little soggy, you never never cheer you. Get the chivet, so are they, Segur so you say your jays. Yuji Lava Sumes, Tabs, Tenshil Ten, Rang Sumsway, do you then two numgy sayons? And then Yamber Missa will shiver day. Told you, no? Dog, somebody gave us a juicy minion so on, then teasing the Huber Nangy. Let's say two chinichang, shall we go in on Yamji? Told the la, who should temper Jenny, 
So, uh, summarizing the things that we have discussed, uh, it stated uh, that, of course, in the case of Bodhisattvas, uh, you know, what they should guard and cherish most is, uh, you know, the, the, the cherishing attitude, cherishing others, right? That Bodhicitta must be protected and guarded at all times. Uh, even if uh, they become poor, they have to live a very poor life, simple life, uh, but never, you know, how should I say, lose, uh, uh, you know, the, the thought of cherishing others. You know, that must be guarded at uh, all times, even at the cost of your life. So that's how the Bodhisattvas uh, uh, have been uh, instructed, you know. So I mean, the lesson we learned from that is that even if we have to remain poor, right, live a simple life, uh, but uh, never, uh, how should I say, sacrifice uh, uh, the, the thought of cherishing others, you know. No, Nord in the man gave it to us, I think it's referring to uh, Arya Nagarjuna's uh, precious garland or Ratni Av Avali addressed to a king. Uh, and uh, so the stanza, uh, it really uh, highlights, uh, uh, if you will, uh, how do we train our mind uh, uh, in giving or generosity, right, following Bodhisattva's way of life. And uh, so Bodhisattvas, at the beginning, you know, training involves that you need to protect your health, body, you need to protect your life, uh, you need to protect your dharma, uh, but you can, you know, uh, kind of, uh, how should I say, uh, share your wealth. You know, you can give your wealth, resources, right? Uh, that's okay, so that you don't, uh, I mean, you're able to overcome your miserliness with regard to resources, right? So giving resources, okay, because you are not ready to be able to sacrifice your body and life. And so when you're not ready, don't do it, you know? But you're able to share your wealth because that's, you know? So once you're trained well in that, right, you feel, okay, sharing wealth, resources, is very easy now. I have no... Then maybe slowly they think about uh, now maybe if possible, through the training of the mind, sacrificing part of the body, if need be. Okay? That's the second stage, isn't it? So then, when you are able to do that, but right, without attachment <coughs> and miserliness, then, you know, you reach a stage where you are even able to sacrifice your life, if need be, for the benefit of others, isn't it? It is a stages of development process. But so you can give up everything, right? Wealth, your body, your life, but the one thing that we should never give up is the Dharma, right? Don't do anything uh, 
uh, that contradicts or that go against the Dharma. So that was the advice given uh, by Nagarjuna uh, uh, to that Indian king. Chua Some uh, in a sutra, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's explanation about, uh, you know, um, what does dharma mean, chu. Yeah, in that particular context, uh, the dharma is explained in terms of, uh, you know, guarding the mind. Uh, and um, uh, so when you say mind, mind is uh, not something that resides in external objects or phenomena. It's not to be found externally. It's not in the objects. Uh, it does not reside in uh, different directions, right? Uh, it's not there. Uh, but uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, dharma, what it means is it's just, uh, you know, uh, cultivating a proper way of thinking, thought, right? That's what it means. So when we talk about practicing dharma, it means how can we transform our way of thinking, right? Our state of mind. And uh, so we know uh, that practice involves... Uh, also, I mean, uh, the, the actions of body and speech, but primarily, when we talk about practice, it is the mind, isn't it? You know, yes, we can sit, you know, physically in a way that represents dharma or reflects like we are practicing. <laughs> Verbally, we could engage in action looks like we are practicing dharma, but actually, the real practice is the mind, you know? Is the mind really in, uh, uh, in the right state of mind or the proper, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the thought. In other words, as Kishala said, uh, you know, how do we differentiate whether what we do is dharma or not? It really has to look uh, uh, on our motivational level, isn't it? If our motivation is 
you know, uh, not dharma, then it doesn't matter what physical verbal action look like, you know. So therefore, mind is uh, of primary importance. And when we even talk about uh, practicing dharma, it basically is uh, transforming, changing our uh, state of mind. Yeah, because all the qualities are cultivated in the mind. All the developments are to be uh, purified of the mind. So mind is, uh, you know, our primary uh, you know, uh, concern in terms of even dharma practice or development. Do uh, Ari Nagarjuna, in his uh, Shuru Lake or Letter to a Friend, friend meaning another king in India, because king, uh, you know, king has a lot of responsibilities uh, to take care of the kingdom. And uh, so the Nagarjuna advised the king, he said, I don't need to say too many things to you, uh, but um, the essence of my uh, kind of advice to you is, uh, you know, try to keep your mind peaceful. Okay? And this is what the Buddha has said, you know, uh, keeping your mind, uh, you know, at uh, peace. Because Buddha said, if your mind is uh, subdued or tamed, that leads to happiness. If your mind remains untamed or unsubdued, that leads to unwanted uh, suffering. So mind is of primary importance. I know you're a very busy man and you have too many responsibilities, but try your best to keep your mind uh, uh, at uh, you know, peace. <laughs> Number Conge <laughs> And <laughs> Tindia 
So mind uh, is, uh, you know, the source of uh, every kind of happiness that we're seeking. It's also the source of all kinds of unwanted, uh, uh, you know, suffering and problems. And if our mind is uh, untamed and uh, undisciplined, uh, then it can uh, get involved in uh, doing the wrong things, and those actions can bring a lot of suffering and precipitate our rebirth in bad migrations and even more suffering for a long time. On the other hand, uh, if our mind is uh, disciplined and tamed, uh, then it becomes the source of every happiness we can imagine and would like to have. Uh, those who are seeking a good rebirth, right, that could come, whatever happiness associated with a good rebirth, that could come from uh, you know, subduing or disciplining the mind. Uh, those who would like to have uh, the happiness or the bliss of the divinities or the celestial beings, uh, uh, that is possible through disciplining the mind. And those who want to go beyond, right? Because this all still we're talking within samsara. But those who would like to experience trans transcendental uh, qualities like the, the peace and happiness of nirvana and the uh, peace uh, uh, and the happiness of the enlightenment. Uh, so all of those things are possible, you know, provided that we, uh, you know, discipline and... Uh, uh, we uh, change our mind, uh, we tame our mind. So mind is at the root of, right, uh, everything that we're talking about. You know, all the suffering we don't want comes to us because untamed mind. All the good things that we would like to have and we enjoy is because of uh, disciplined mind and uh, uh, tamed mind. No. <laughs> Sungan Gosum ge nega sedar jua so 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 da ne jube shi shi te tini karung re tam mai par ne bo ta na na ba tam ji di be be song shi che sam so la pa jang song shi che de za zi la men zhao yi che ba yu ba dar dar zang ge be ta na gun du yu be be song shi che che ja yu ba song la se kan ta yu Chi Nibotaka Tenshi 
So we are on page uh, 43, uh, stanza 23. Uh, the one thing Keshara said is, you know, we have uh, you know, talked quite a bit about uh, the need to guard our mind. And of course, we want to know how to do that. Uh, and uh, so now, uh, uh, Shanti Deva says, I'll explain that uh, first briefly and then more in details. Uh, so the briefly is captured in stanza 23. Uh, that reads, O oh, you who wish to guard your minds, I beseech you with folded hands, always exert yourselves to guard mindfulness and alertness. So that's a brief uh, presentation. As Kishel explained, uh, you know, guarding our mind is of primary importance, but how to do that? What do we need in order to be able to guard our mind? We need two things, right? Mindfulness and alertness or introspection. Uh, so without mindfulness and uh, alertness, introspection, so we cannot guard our mind. The only way we can stay focused, you know, on an object or our practice, in our practice, is through mindfulness. Mindfulness kind of keeps our mind on the focus or in the practice, and introspection helps us to figure out whether our mind is on the object or focus or it is gone somewhere, right? And so we need mindfulness and introspection to, uh, you know, uh, to stay uh, focused. Uh, and so it's, it's by way of cultivating mindfulness and introspection so we can guard, uh, you know, guard our uh, mind. So in other words, we need to protect our practice and our precepts and vows. What do we need to do that? In order to, you know, keep our vows intact, we need to guard our mind. In order to guard our mind, we need mindfulness introspection. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> ซึ่งสมมุติสมมุติสิที่ที่ก็สิ่งที่ว่าที่เกี่ยวกับที่ส่งส่งเท่าแต่เทียนบ้าเชื่อว่าโง่คนต้องเชื่อเรื่องนี
And great Indian master uh, Atisha, Devam Karsirjan Atisha also often advised uh, you know, his uh, disciples uh, to cultivate uh, mindfulness, tenba, introspection, sheshin, alertness, and uh, pagyu, uh, carefulness or vigilant, or vigilantly careful. See? Uh, and uh, so those three things are needed uh, uh, to uh, guard our mind and uh, to stay, uh, uh, to, uh, to do our practice. Uh, and uh, so often, uh, Adisha was very fond of uh, asking people, like instead of we say, you know, how have you been? And Adisha usually says, like, have you been kind? Right, this is his way of, uh, you know, kind of uh, greeting and say, have you been kind? You know, uh, and uh, so he always reminds people that you should uh, be mindful of keeping kind-heartedness and all of those things. So one of the things we need to guard our mind is mindfulness, or in Tibetan called tenba. So what is tenba, mindfulness? Okay. So it is defined uh, in the text that it has to have a three uh, characteristics, if you will. Uh, mindfulness arises in relation to uh, what we call a familiar uh, focus or object, jiva, right? Something that's familiar with, right? Uh, that's one. And uh, so once in, it arises in relation to a familiar or familiarized object, and then it, uh, it uh, doesn't forget that object. Right, non-forgetfulness or unforgetfulness, right, is a, is a characteristic of mindfulness, and because of that, what happens is that the mind does not get distracted, and you know, a distraction is prevented. So those are defining characteristics of uh, you know mindfulness. Okay. No. Good. This is a not mindy, but the time we give it, give it more. Did I think they do or not? Did they? ただ論の馬車の全部民、全部民主です。民主で、シェスを、ペラ。で、で、全部で、ね、全部コンベディングで、民主で、シェスを、バイン、ラス、で、シェスを、シェスを、シェスを、シェスを、シェスを、シェス
Now, uh, introspection, uh, you know, is defined in terms of uh, uh, kind of uh, being aware of uh, almost like what you are doing every moment, right? If you say, okay, I'm sitting now, right? Uh, you just check on that. I said I'm eating and being aware, right? Am I eating or am I doing something else? That's introspection, you know. I'm standing, I'm sitting, I'm, you know, walking, I'm studying, whatever I'm doing, right? That checks, right? We check upon ourselves, whatever we are doing. Because we have to be mindful of what we're doing. You know, don't be like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know. But that would be, you know, not mindfulness. Like mindfulness means, that, okay, I, I'm sitting right now. Okay, I'm studying, I'm eating. Right? I'm walking, I'm doing this. So that's being mindfulness, right? And introspection checks on that. Am I really studying or eating or, you know, uh, whatever I'm doing? Right. <laughs> So introspection has this ability to recognize what we are doing at the moment, right? And if we know that what we are doing is something uh, positive, then we would like to promote it, isn't it? But if we uh, introspect our action and we say, okay, what I'm doing is not correct, I'm doing something bad, uh, then we should really stop it, right? Not like we recognize I'm doing bad and then just keep doing it. <laughs> uh, so introspection has that ability to recognize and being aware of what is uh, uh, what we are doing. Because Nibajirte Simple no so now, uh, you know, we go a little more details about uh, the need for mindfulness and introspection and uh, stanza 24 reads, uh, uh, people who are disturbed by sickness have no strength to do anything, I don't in the bracket, that's that useful. Uh, likewise, those whose minds are disturbed by confusion have no strength to do anything wholesome, unquote. Uh, so Gisela explanation is that uh, why we must uh, cultivate mindfulness introspection is uh, these, uh, uh, you know, uh, mental factors, uh, they add power uh, to what we do, to our practice and uh, to positive actions. Um, and um, uh, just like this, if we are lacking these things, you know, our practice would lack the strength or uh, the power. Uh, the example given is that uh, people who are, 
you know, physically very, uh, how should I say, uh, sick, unwell. Uh, so even if they want to do something, practice, they can't do. They, right, the, the sickness is, has taken a toll upon themselves. They have no strength. Even if they want to do something, they can't. Even if they do, the, it's it just, you know, the, uh, it's very weak, right, whatever they do. Uh, so in the same way, if we are lacking mindfulness introspection, uh, uh, then even if we do practice, you know, like say we are cultivating samadhi, you know, or concentration, uh, our practice will uh, not have so much power and the strength. What really brings strength into our wholesome actions and practices uh, is uh, the power of uh, mindfulness and uh, uh, introspection. Yes. <laughs> で、さじ、で、しし、めべ、せ、にみ、し、そうで。で、さず、ごで、ぎ、あんで、せ、な、しし、めべ、にばた。とんどぎ、あんで、せ、な、しし、め、え、てんじ、にがめべ、にばし、
you know, uh, the, um, how should I say, what happens if we are lacking alertness or introspection uh, in what we do? And so it reads, uh, whatever has been learned, contemplated, and meditated upon by those whose minds lack alertness, introspection, just like water in a leaky vase will not be retained in their memory, unquote. Uh, so that's what's going to happen if we lack. Let's say even if somebody, because of, uh, you know, uh, you know, their, um, which is a practice in the past or something, they, they have uh, like good intelligence like in this life by birth, so to speak. Uh, but if they lack uh, introspection, uh, uh, then even if they meditate, they are not going to see much progress in their meditation practice. And the example given here is like, you know, we uh, put uh, liquid or water in a leaky pot. First, it looks like full, right? Then slowly, slowly, you know, it runs out. So like that, uh, even if by birth, somebody seems to learn things very fast and easily, but then without introspection, then it's like a leaky pot, you, you know, slowly, slowly, things, you know, <laughs> uh, disappear there, uh, out from your mind, of course, you know. Yeah. So Kishala said we would like to stop there because we need to do the talk uh, uh, offerings. So page 43, stanza 25. They came the message to more So I would like to uh, do a uh, you know, mandala offering to complete uh, the teaching and one stanza dedication so that people who are participating in the teaching, then by that you complete the whole thing, right? You don't have to stay for the talk, okay? Uh, because those of us who are here, we will do more elaborate uh, dedications later. Logan Bone Gondo, Bear Tony Tower, Rimboche, Maja Pana, Gigurje, Gawa Yamba, Meb, Bone Gondo, Bear Show. I have some prayer requests. Come to share you again. Any gig in Sazan Joni, that's the way you say Marwa, to make Jamjo Naranasa. The next send there a fam zoom. Uh, prayer has been requested uh, for the first week uh, puja for late uh, Fem Tri Dung. Uh, and the prayer has been requested for uh, Johnny, who is uh, not feeling well. Uh, and uh, so uh, we will do that uh, during the talk. Okay, so I want you to think about that. Okay. Okay, so more prayer for that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 Dolabinjas <laughs> <laughs> Then 
我们的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人
哈，谢呀，永吉呀，吉吉呀，早吉，吉那将军身旁，八宝长者，你的吉多，你那诸位王伯，为谁要做做，你吉呀，三宝，吉天把那些吉的，他过这些，我就要老马，一旦经过老早，三吉将军把我看着，天孙将军过年。得到各种多吉种子，红叶白吉摘，那些奶奶一些帮忙，天上也能见到。红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，红叶白吉摘，却那人间诸王困了，呀，那座女界三八七千多，这样下边天界真了解，将军当八国界邪术。金不言，我算个半家山的家嘛。正在老马人间打边鼓，多吉金上边马家子。人家家我闺女一家女，看这些样，家边大姑家。我面前边还一男子，我将军当边下了家子。你不要把家接把中家接，把面迎接人间过节节，天天马了准备过节不，接着拉面下拉家，拉家准备上街逛街我，一天天弄堂子就来呢，他说逛街为哪拉面吧，天天拉嘛那拉家。地上小小小边浪漫的，人间小村大街旁边了。这些面边怎样讲着街，心里娘边绿的桥子很多。老马过街了，那座之间叫做别话的。为了人家，为把你养了，大姐自己就见得也吧。东坡三马镇王边了吧，这边没东山大坝能看。这些边疆的坝边多也，也见我们边界拉浪的。你大人把人把这面做，动作面色别人在看我，他不真的我换这个别，不就做见不要过年节，老家军队啥家都完蛋，老大没也现在轮不不，那做人面这个他也不，兄弟大人。走到街头，人家人家多，千万不要忘记我。我也见我上街，人间的人不见，人间的那年表，人间说，滚瓜年表，女婿不装作，拉面龙卷，丢个的钱不。大别人家，别着心，别着，将军多见得老别娃。我想一着一些家子，我谁家能干来我军子去？老东家别管家一着急，几点几点领得上心。我算这边没多几样着，鬼上这边这算不着。拉住人家，老年的点表，好些几句老马。不过当地上边这年纪，若也毕竟家家都忙，家就我当这忙我老说，强多毛病对些。
有我郎者便见主作见得别有者老给人知道 Nemo 都接见的见完月见夜 Yadayundo Sera 当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当当
Jin ya lama, jin ya yida, jin ya khandu ji jong. Din ya zong de jang jom ba du, jin min gya jin mi so ve. Yida ba du, jin mi ya da yang, tu ji jya ji zong zi. Si ji ya ji zi, wun zi, wun zi, din ji ya zi zi ba ji so. Jin ya lama, jin ya yida, jin ya khandu. Tenea zong tea jang jong bong do jim mea gya jim mi zo ve De dang bong do jim mea ta yang tu ji jya ju zong zi la Si ji ya ji ju ngu ju ngu ten ji yang ju zi pa ji zo So wang da bing du la mi ngu zong do ji ni na li Thank <laughs> 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 Vedinda nana wombe oma zomba wajido zawa nama zomba wajido han domba Dombe ngale yale lungi yingu ngombo chu yeta bo ba dengi zimba de Nale me yingu ma bo tu zumba de dendo ale mingu nje bo zunji Ale jube te ba ka bo de nangye cha dun rule jube ka langye cha gwe Lora ale jube jie cha gwe zimba nudo jule jube langbo jie cha Chanto ale jube de cha he zimba uzo hule jube mi cha ne zimba Shalo lale jube di jimbe zimba lono do ma le jube rata re No jang do ma le jube chang zeng ka bo shi zimba cha cha do dang le jube ka ma mi Uzo hule jube di jube zimba te ta ye ten do ho ma kar bo a Hong Kong Bosu Wang Ten 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 Do Sa Pa Rang Ki Tu Kwe Mung Le Pe Se Tri Pe Lung La Po Pe Lung Ye Me Te Pe Zen Na Chi Chi Ng Kwa Pa Ju O Ki Ke Su Le Pe Se Rin Pa Chin To Chin Ko To Che Sun To Che To To Chin Na Ku Ni Yi Ke Sun La Rin Chi Te Pa Na Te Pa Mung Le Shu Pe Hong Ki Ka To Chin Yi Chi Chi Ye Di Si To Pa Chi Wang Ji Mang Kung Pa Chi Pe Pa Chi Ma 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 Oh, yeah. 
Sameen 
Amen. <laughs> Joe Omo Gujin Doga get on the la do home. Omo Jundin de Mantoje Pamo la chaze home. Om Pama Rime Ojo Hazon de Medo home. Om Jumbin Jiba Tamje Doje Chimbin Jong home. Om Doje de Jinji Medo Wanje Jen home. Om Dumin Jame Soje Sambara Gambaran Zen home. Yeah. 
Tang Malu Tajadun 大家都说这边顺德呢,感情广播电竞叫做也,或者没事,给叫, 大家都说这边顺德呢,感情广播电竞叫做也,或者没事,给讲。Ningdo Mm 用作有人逃避 we
Tanya Mandu 
Tanajanamadojanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanjanj
Lai 我们的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的祖先的
еще. Идет.